NBC Sports, home of the Olympic Games, Notre Dame football, the Premier League, the NASCAR playoffs, Sunday Night Football, and Super Bowl 56, only on NBC. It's a sunny afternoon in San Francisco. You get a look at the iconic Golden Gate Bridge on this first Sunday of fall. And a good drive south of there to Levi's Stadium. They're finally back in there. Remember, the Niners had to leave during last season and couldn't play because of health regulations. But they're back, and so is Jimmy G. Jimmy Garoppolo has led San Francisco to a pair of road wins to start the year. Big test at home as Northern California native Aaron Rodgers back in the old hood. Green Bay looking for back-to-back -back primetime wins. They won on Monday night. Can they win on the road in Santa Clara on Sunday night? Before the Packers and Niners on Sunday night football, as always, we start with Football Night in America. Welcome in. Hi, everybody. Mike Tirico, Tony Dungy, Drew Brees, Super Bowl winners, one in the Hall of Fame, one going in the Hall of Fame. You know the whole <laughs> drill. So I love this matchup because it gives us a little bit of a matchup we've seen the last few years in the league. Now, last year, the 49ers were beat up. Green Bay beat them. However, when we go back to when it's mattered before that, San Francisco, Drew, has had Green Bay's number. Yes, I, I would see this as being a real litmus test tonight for Green Bay and who they really are. Two years ago in 2019, they played them twice and were really dominated in both of those games, especially up front. The Green Bay defense could not stop the 49ers offense running the football, and the San Francisco defensive line got after Aaron Rodgers the entire game. So for them, the, the one difference with this game, though, is they, I think Green Bay is in a position with their playmakers all together and really needing to make a statement where I think they can take advantage of this 49ers secondary. Well, they, they can if they get time, and that's the formula on the San Francisco side. Pass rush, Green Bay banged up up front, offensive line injuries, get after them, and you mentioned that playoff game in 2019, Jimmy Garoppolo only threw eight passes. That's what San Francisco would like to do, pound them with the running game. I would expect a shootout tonight, though, and I think Jimmy G is going to have to do more in this matchup than he did two years ago. We'll talk about Jimmy G and the help he gets, what he needs to do in a little bit. But I want to turn the attention to the games we watched. We saw a couple of special teams records. I mean, NFL records hasn't happened in over a century of National Football League action. We're going to show you that in a little bit. But what caught your eye today, Drew? Anything stick out to you? Uh, well, yes, I think there's a formula to uh, uh, hold down the Chiefs' offense, and I think we've seen it the last two weeks now. The Ravens started it with just four-man and three-man rushes, keeping their defensive backs over the top, not allowing guys like Tyreek Hill to make these big plays. Instead, keep everything in front of you and force throws and decisions like this from Patrick Mahomes, which are very uncharacteristic. We haven't seen this from this Chiefs' offense. And for me, Mike, it was the Buffalo Bills. They got off to a slow start their opening game, but lately, the last two weeks, this is what we've seen from the Bills. Big plays from Josh Allen, a defense that takes the ball away. The Bills are who we think they are. And look pretty good in the AFC East. The Patriots lost. We welcome those of you who just watched the Jets get shut out by Denver 26-0. Miami's two minutes away from losing, so Buffalo's in good shape in their division. All the highlights ahead, but let's open the highlight vault a little bit. Maria Taylor and Christopher Sims. Well, let's do it, because if a quarterback is who he thinks he is, then he ends up on this list. It's the best throws list for Chris Sims That's and what right. stood out for you today. Well, let's go to Pittsburgh. One of the upsets of the day. I mean, the Cincinnati Bengals, Joe Burrow going into Pittsburgh and having their way with the Pittsburgh Steelers. But this play right here, as big as it gets. 7-7 seven, seven, right before the half. Jamar Chase, can he catch the ball? Yes, he's doing it every week. That's great to see from the Cincinnati Bengals. Then, Lamar Jackson, second week in a row, fourth quarter comeback. Mm. Huge. Fourth and 19, great patience in the pocket, and just a pinpoint touch pass over the top of the defender. 
to help them win their football game. Yeah, no drop off for the Ravens, but let's go back to Jamar Chase. Remember all the drops in the preseason, and now he's the youngest player in NFL history to have four receiving touchdowns in his first three games. Good for him. Way to go, Jamar. Yeah, you know who never drops a pass? It would have to be Jack Collinsworth and Rodney Harrison. And right now, they are outside of Levi Stadium uh, getting a set for our Sunday night matchup. Maria, I can hear absolutely nothing, and I've never been happier about it. There is no sound better than the first home game of the year. A warm welcome for the unbeaten 49ers. We always start our Sunday looking for the best defense in the country. Who took that crown today? I got to go to the AFC North. I got to go with the Cleveland Browns. They were absolutely outstanding today. They bullied the Bears' offensive line. Matt Nagy never made any adjustments, and Miles Garrett was outstanding. Four and a half stacks. Constant pressure to Dave Van Clowney. He was awesome as well. Another team at the top of the AFC North. How about me saying this right now? The Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, Listen to the crowd. They even on. love the Bengals right here. They made life you miserable. You have to speak them in. In this Had segment, to. we're supposed to mention one team. Okay, I'm going to give your Cincinnati Bengals some props. They did an excellent job on defense today. What about Big Ben? What did you see from Big Ben Roethlisberger? He just looked old. I'm worried about Big Ben. The offensive line isn't very good, and Ben looked extremely old. Well, here in San Francisco, they have invested heavily in their defensive front, trying to create another Super Bowl run. They'll have to slow down Aaron Jones, who's coming off by a monster Monday night. My name is Aaron Jones, and my cause is a a all the way. It's me and my brother's foundation and it's really about the youth giving back to underprivileged kids. And through my foundation, every yard I have up to a thousand yards uh, equals a pair of shoes for kids here in the Green Bay area in need. So just trying to make a difference in my community. Aaron is doing a great work, and he had an awesome conversation with Rodney earlier this week. You can catch that entire chat over on NBCSports.com. And Jones lost his dad, Alvin Jones Sr., unexpectedly back in April. Aaron told me that his dad made it his mission to be there for every one of his games, be it at UTEP in college or with the Green Bay Packers, home or away. And Aaron wore a pendant on Monday Night Football against Detroit with his father's ashes inside. That pendant was knocked off during the game, but found at 1.45 in the morning by the Packers head trainer on Monday night it was a four touchdown game for Jones three of them as a receiver what do you like about the way that they're using him in Green Bay Rob I don't think they give him I don't think they use him enough in the pass again he's a very talented young man he could play anywhere on the field you can line him up as a wide receiver and trust me linebackers and safeties don't want to chase this young man around David Bakhtiari, one of the best left tackles in all of football, still working his way back from an ACL injury. Even their backups are beat up. How does the injuries up front affect their strategy offensively for the Packers? I think it changes. I think it's a quick passing game. Robert Tunyon, tight end, he becomes more of a factor. Aaron Rodgers, trust him. He's got soft hands, and he's a big target in the red zone. The Tunyon coming off a career year. He's starting to work his way into that and circle of trust. And screens. Let's not forget about that. Look at these fans. Give it going. Mike, it's a madhouse out here. Back over to you. Oh, they have a good reason to enjoy and be excited about getting Jimmy Garoppolo back in that stadium. When we talk about Garoppolo and the impact he's had on this offense, people say, oh, he's got to throw it more. But he's trying to win over some fans there, but I want to show you some numbers that really win over fans. That's wins. Since he arrived there in 2017, only the Saints have a better winning percentage when he plays. You're welcome, Drew. And when he's been out of the lineup, the Niners have the worst <laughs> record wow. in the league. Pretty black and white. Jimmy G's a winning quarterback. MVP then. Well, people want more. So where's the more? <laughs> it can be with the passing game, but they do it with the running game to have the most success when he's in there at quarterback. Yeah, Kyle Shanahan's offense is built around the run, and Drew, they think they can run it tonight at these Green Bay Packers. Green Bay's outside linebackers are great pass rushers, but they don't. Niners don't think they're great against the run. How are they going to attack them? Well, and this is where Kyle Shanahan is masterful with these shifts and motions. So watch as he brings George Kittle across the line of scrimmage. Watch what that does to Zadarius Smith. It forces him to widen out by two steps. So it's all about creating angles, matchups, and space for these running backs to make cuts. And then they are going to run behind two of the best lead blockers in football, Kyle Juszczyk and George Kittle, and watch this hole they open up. And this is what they feel like they'll get, these type of holes. 
Yeah, the one thing that they're missing now is obviously they don't have a guy like Mostert or one of these explosive home run type guys. So can they get it done with the guys that they have? Certainly the four and five yard runs are good, but you'd love to have those explosive type plays as well. And I think they're going to get some of those, but that is going to be the formula tonight. Run at them. Jimmy Garoppolo will then go off the play action game. The injuries that hurt their defense at the start of last year has gotten their running back room significantly. Like you mentioned, Trey Sermon, who they drafted out of Ohio State, see if he can have a big role. And he's also dinged up as well. So Jimmy Garoppolo from New England, of course, next week. We're going to New England. Really? Garoppolo used to be a Patriot. Tom Brady <laughs> used to be a Patriot. And we're going to be there for his return game. Now, YouTube TV customers, you may not see that game because YouTube TV may drop NBC. For more information and ways to tell YouTube TV to keep NBC and Sunday Night Football, go to youneedchannels.com. Some great games coming down to the wire and already played. Highlights are coming up. We're back on Football Night in America. Here are the highlights in week three. Tony, let's watch somebody go for win one. Falcons and Giants, the big headline. Eli Manning to the ring of honor. Congratulations, Eli. Two-time Super Bowl champ. Giants up seven in the fourth. Adoree Jackson has a pick and he dropped. You have to end the game right there. You have to end it. Make that play. They did. So Matt Ryan has another chance. He's got Lee Smith as tight end. What Eight. happens when you drop interception? Tied at 14. Falcons stop the Giants, get the ball back. It's the number four overall pick, Kyle Pitts, with a big play to get him in field goal range for Youngway Ko, who is a very solid, dependable, late game kicker. And he got the game winner. So Eli Manning Day is ruined. Daniel Jones and the Giants are 0 and 3. Let's go to the AFC South. Colts looking for win one, taking on one and one Tennessee. Ryan Tannehill off the good game in Seattle. Good start here, and the ex Colt Chester Rogers. Yes, and Tannehill was under control and in charge today. <laughs> Rogers remembers T.Y. Well, used shout to out to T.Y. Carson Wentz started with the bad ankles, but he got hit a lot. Same way too much of this, and it continued today. Hits on Wentz. Established offense from Tennessee in the second half. It's Tannehill to Jeremy McNichols. Derrick Henry over 100 yards. Titans are 2 1. The Colts are winless. Ravens and Lions, what a game this turned out to be. Lamar Jackson coming off the Sunday night thriller. Baltimore was in a tight one. He had a couple of drops early. His team's up two. Jackson trying to keep it alive gets picked off here. Just an ill advised throw. You got to push it into field goal range, get up five points, throw it in the traffic. The over Warrior pick put the Lions in position. Ryan Santoso kicks it. Detroit leads by one, but there is still time left. Goff led a nice drive. They ran the ball well. Here we are, fourth and 19, Tony. Again, I don't understand this defense. Three-man rush, man coverage. Lamar waits it out, finds the open receiver. It's Sammy Watkins for 36. They're alive. Six seconds left as the clock runs down. Ravens are out of time at seven seconds, I should say. Watch the play clock. It hits zero, and then nearly 1.6 seconds will go off in real time for when a clock hits zero to the snap. They don't call the Lay of game. Jackson throws it legally out of bounds. That's not grounding. So there is time for Justin Tucker. 66 yards. The longest kick in the history of the National Football League. Off the crossbar and over. Only Tucker, <laughs> only the Lions find a way to lose a game like that in a stunner. They come back and win the game. As for the delay of game, talk to the league office. It's a judgment call. The back judge is supposed to look at the game clock, then look at the ball. It said 1.6 seconds. There's no set amount of time, but they said... So they got 41.6. There's no way that should not have been delayed. Game. That's an egregious error by the back judge in that situation, procedure or not. Not an error by Justin Tucker. <laughs> I did the game eight years ago in Detroit. He kicked a walk-off 61-yarder on Monday Night Football. That was 66-yarder. He's right at home there, and he's a guy who you know from your home, from Austin, yeah. Texas. His only two games in that stadium That's have, right. have had That's those right. results. Yes, he went to my high school, so I've been watching this guy kick, kick clutch kicks for a very long time. And I don't know if there's a guy in the league that we have more confidence in when he steps on the field uh -huh. that he's going to make that type of kick. But 66 yards. Okay, we know that's on the outskirts of his range, but watch what he does before this kick. I've never seen this before. He takes this crow hop to come up and kick this ball. So what does that do? That's the equivalent of a center fielder taking a crow hop to throw a guy out at home. Right. It creates ground force production that gives you more power and energy in your leg to kick that ball, and that was the difference on that kick. To the Detroit Lions, who once lost to a Tom Dempsey game-winning field goal. I saw that one growing up. November yes. of 1970, lose on a new record-setting field goal in the NFL. Mike Florio, you spoke with the man who made that kick earlier today. 
Yeah, and that crow hop ended up being very important because Justin Tucker told me that before the game, he was short from 65 yards going each way in that stadium. And I asked him, are you thinking about that in that final kick? He said, yeah, I'm thinking about a lot of things potentially. I could be feeling excited for the opportunity. I could be feeling grateful. I could be feeling confident. I could be feeling nervous or outright scared. I said, so what was it today? He said, all of the above. And he nailed it. <laughs> the, the man of many talents, the noted opera singer as well, comes off with a perfect high note there. More highlights now. Chris and Maria. Yeah, all right, Mike. Listen, Justin Tucker, not the only one that was going for a record-setting kick. We'll get to that. But first, let's start with Washington on the road, taking on the Bills. Josh Allen um, having himself a day after being very critical of his first two weeks of play. Yeah, well, this is what makes him insane. His ability to buy time, get outside the pocket, and then make throws like that that are truly special. The 28-yard to Emmanuel Sanders, and then second quarter. Porter, yep. Finding his running back, Zach Moss, with a seven yard touchdown. Right. Great protection. We're not seeing that Washington front four be that special to this point, but this Buffalo offense had it going this, uh, today. Been a dream season for Taylor Heineke, but not on this play. No, not at all. You're dancing around, right? Dancing around the pocket. You got to see throws there, kind of throws it blind. Big play for the Buffalo defense. All right, let's see if the Bills can capitalize. Of course they can. Allen to Dawson Knox with a 14 yard touchdown. Great throw, back shoulder, only where the receiver can catch. It, Maria, and then you got Josh Allen again. Woo. I mean, give him time in the pocket. He can carve you up. Man, there was a point in this game where the Bills had scored 56 unanswered points dating back to last week against Jacksonville. Speaking of Jacksonville, still looking for their first win of the season is Trevor Lawrence. Let's go to his opening drive. Looks great here. I mean, this is in the pocket. Great patience there. And then just a nice banana ball in the back left corner of the end zone there. And you're thinking, okay, Jacksonville looks good today. Yeah, and then uh, Matt Prater on for the 68-yard field goal attempt trying to make his own record but Jamal Agnew had other plans. Well he did and this is the issue with trying this long field goal attempt. You don't have tacklers on the field. You got a bunch of blockers so nobody can get there to rally. If some people take some bad angles and Jacksonville goes into the half with all the momentum. And Agnew ties the NFL record for the longest scoring play at 109 yards. Remember Prater owned the record for the longest field goal at 64 yards and now Jamal Agnew is able to run it back 109 yards. Third quarter the Jags are up 19-10. Here comes the Cardinals. Cardinals are a different team this year. 19-10 they they came right back down the field, answered, and then the defense has a little answer too. Oh, you mean Brian Murphy's interception for a 29-yard touchdown? Yes, there is a lot of good players on both sides of the ball for this Arizona Cardinals football team. Yeah, incredible pick six. Well, that beats the kick six, and we talked about the Cardinals and consistency, maybe not the word we're going to use to describe them, but they've been able to finish games that we haven't seen them do. That's right. I mean, I feel like that was kind of a letdown game, but they found a way to kind of battle through a rough spot, and this Arizona Cardinals team's offense Defensively, defensively, got a lot of guys that can make a lot of game-breaking plays. Which is great news yeah. for the Cardinals because a season ago, they seven of their eight losses were by 10 points or fewer. So now they're turning on the gas and they can win some of those close games. Meanwhile, Debo Samuels, let's talk about him, Chris, leads San Francisco with 15 receptions and 282 yards. He's the secret weapon of this offense. He does everything off the play-action pass game to the speed sweeps in the run game for Kyle Shanahan's offense. All right, we'll see what he has for us tonight against the Packers, our matchup for Sunday Night Football. This is Football Night in America, served by Applebee's. Sunday Night Football! Everybody watching! The San Francisco Pack Rush is ready to remember the feeling of playing alongside the roar of 70,000 of their closest friends. Nick Bosa, he leads that group, already has three sacks to his name. Rod, a lot of resources on that defensive front for games like tonight. Absolutely, and when they've had success against the Packers, it's been because they've been able to dominate the line of scrimmage and overwhelm them with the pass rush, and that starts with Nick Bosa. He's coming off an ACL. He's not 100%. You can tell when you're watching him, but he still gives you great energy and effort. You already know. And Fred Warner goes all over the field. He's led this defense in tackles ever since he's been here. Doing it again this season. How does he make his presence felt? Man, he, hey, I don't know. I, I just know that he's the best player on their team. He is just all over the field. He tackles well. He's a tremendous leader. And he just makes plays, though. Matches up with running backs like Aaron Jones Absolutely. as well. He'll have to do that. He played 100% 
of their defensive snaps last week. Sounds about like our Mike Tirico. Mike, back over to you. You got it, Jack. Let's get back to the highlights, man. Your uh, Bengals and against the Steelers here. And Big Ben trying to rebound from the loss to Las Vegas last week, Tony. No score, but uh, again, hit sloppy offensive football for Pittsburgh. The Steelers' offensive line still a problem. Weren't able to run the football much today, and this was the kind of pass protection we saw quite a bit of. Not much. Ben flexing the elbow, walking off. Joe Burrow and company, they got a touchdown out of that one. It was 7-0. Now it's 7-7, and it's Burrow. That LSU connection with the rookie, Jamar Chase, looking good. Beautiful timing, understanding his receiver can outrun the defense. That is their third touchdown connection. Hang on, there's more coming. I go back to the Steelers now. It's 17-7 in the third, and it's Roethlisberger picked again by Wilson. One of two Big Ben interceptions on the day. That was a, a tough throw. Three people could have intercepted that one. They gave Cincinnati the ball in great field position, and it's going to be this connection. Burrow and Chase, four touchdowns in three games. And no T.J. Watt, a lot of time back there for Joe Burrow, finding the open man. First time in six years, the Bengals go to Heinz Field and get a win. Pittsburgh's rushing attack, non-existent, 45 yards. Cincy is 2-1. and one. Pittsburgh pointing their division to lose because Cleveland won. They beat Chicago in the Justin Fields debut out of Ohio State, making his NFL first start in the state of Ohio and under pressure all day from Miles. Garrett. Yeah, Miles Garrett called out his teammates up front. He said, we've all got to do better. Well, he started it by leading the charge. Uh, he started it, and he kept going. Now I'm going to move him inside here. Yeah, rushing against the guard, getting a one-on-one, -on -one and staying after with relentless effort. He played outstanding today. Cleveland had nine sacks. Fields had six completions on the day. We jumped to the Cleveland side of the offense. Baker Mayfield gets a good Bears defense. Finally cracked through with Austin Hooper. Good throw down the middle. Baker is playing outstanding football, following his reads, not trying to do too much. And the ground game finally gets going. Kareem Hunt turns the corner from 29 yards. Great back to make you a good play caller, Mike. I don't know that that was a great play call, but it turned out well. Finally, 215 rushing yards against Chicago as they wore down. Miles Garrett continued his field day. Four and a half sacks of the nine. Long day for Matt Nagy and the Bears. I obviously, as a head coach, did not do a good enough job of uh, getting this offense ready to go to be able to play and win a football game. So uh, it starts with me, it ends with me, and uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, there has been so much conversation about this in the preseason, start of the regular season, and now that we saw Justin Fields. So as you watched, what did you see, what did you observe in the rookie's first start? Well, what they need to do is they need to start building that offense to the rookie strength and put him in a position to succeed. That's run game. That's play action. That's RPOs. That's getting him on the perimeter and allowing him to see throws. That's where he is at his best. That's where he'll make good decisions and also be able to make plays with his legs. There, this was maybe one of, of, of the opportunities he had to get outside the pocket. The rest of the day was spent in the pocket with guys like Miles Garrett, one of the best pass rushers in the league, just teeing off on him. So, listen, they're going to have games like this where he's going to have to drop back at times, but let's help him out by chipping, nudging these guys, giving him an opportunity to process and find completions. You know, Mike, I worked for Denny Green, mm -hmm. and when we'd play great pass rushers, he'd tell Brian Billick, our offensive coordinator, I never want to see Bruce Smith single block, or you're getting fired. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw way too much of Miles Garrett just running free against one man today. Yeah. You can't let the best player on that defense beat you, and that's what they allowed to happen today. He did with four and a half sacks, and Mike Florio, you spoke to him after the game. Yeah, and he told me that the Browns defense was surprised by the way that Justin Fields was used, or more accurately, the way he wasn't used. They didn't move him around. They didn't get him out of the pocket. They didn't roll him out. They didn't take advantage of his mobility. It made it easier for the defensive lineman to get home, to get him onto the ground, and we saw Garrett do it four and a half times a team record. Cleveland tied for the lead in their division. I welcome those of you who watched the Rams beat the Bucks, the NFC West. You better win to keep up with everybody. Jimmy Garoppolo and the 49ers trying to do that. Against the Packers on Sunday Night Football. Bunch of highlights. Stay with us. Securing the win. Presented by Simply Safe. Touchdown, San Francisco. Jennings' first touchdown in the NFL. The running touchdown. Jones, the touchdown maker, his fourth touchdown tonight. And there is your dagger. Football Night in America is brought to you by Applebee's. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. And by 
GEICO. Save even more when you bundle home and car insurance. This is bad, man. The news is Rodgers wants out of Green Bay. I just expressed my desire to be more involved in conversations directly affecting my job. If I'm not a part of the future, if you want to make a change and move forward, then go ahead and do it. A lot of things that transpired. Obviously, I didn't show up for the off-season program. Did you have any fun this summer? Yeah, I did. These are desperate times for the Packers. We played bad. I played bad. One game. We got 16 to go. Aaron Rodgers, fourth touchdown pass tonight. There's so many overreactions that happen. So it's nice to come out and have a good performance and get the trolls off our back for at least a week. Yeah, things calmed down. 38-3, the loss to New Orleans week one. Four touchdown passes on Monday night. So Aaron Rodgers and the Packers back in position, right? We'll find out. Northern California from Chico, California. Back in the Northern California area in Santa Clara tonight. Hey, why don't we check the points bet pulse? It's looking at Rodgers passing yards tonight. Points bet has the over under at 279 and a half. I want to bring in our quarterbacks, Drew and Chris. Guys, he has so many freakish skills. What makes Aaron Rodgers so unique in your eyes? Well, I think the first thing is, I mean, he's got an unbelievable arm. I mean, he's got unbelievable feet with that. And I think that's what you got to check out in this highlight package. Drew saw this in person last year, right? I mean, running to the opposite side, just a flick of the wrist with both feet parallel to the line of scrimmage. Then there's scrambling to the right week one against Minnesota. Nobody open. Again, feet all over the place, sidearm throw into tight cover. Average, bam on the money that's what's unreal and then again the ability to improvise the play nobody's open and just falling backwards to throw the ball into the back of the end zone drew it's amazing what what amazes you uh, about Aaron Rodgers well he's a bio biomechanical freak he does things that nobody else can do like guys like you and me if we want to throw the ball accurately and with velocity Everything has to be going towards the target, right? Right. Our feet, our offhand, our hips, our shoulders, everything sequenced up to our target. Not Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers can step over here, he can step over there, and throw it this direction because he's got the hips and the shoulders and just the eyes level towards the target but it's it's in a way that nobody else can do i've never seen anybody do it the way he does it he's off the ground half the time when he's throwing because he's generating so much ground force production and it's just transferring to the ball out of his hand it's unreal he's the most gifted thrower i've ever seen mike like i said and he's gonna have to make some really gifted throws i think tonight for them to beat the 49ers i thought you two were gonna throw the ball you look like <laughs> well you want to catch <laughs> it here it goes here it goes ready. the highlights charges <laughs> and cheese. i can do highlights and catch footballs no problem asante samuel jr he finds footballs you know what, Marcus Kemp, he's new to the Chiefs. He wasn't ready for the Mahomes no-look, and Asante comes up with the pick. Again, what else is new? Mahomes trying to find Tyreek Hill. There were another turnover. What was going on earlier? We had, didn't see this from the Chiefs last year or the year before. Now, careless with the football in three straight games, they're going to have to get out of this mode or they're not going to win. And that was four takeaways on the day for Kansas City, and this was the third. Remember Sunday night, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire fumbled in a key spot. Here he fumbles again. They're talented. They've got great weapons, but you can't be loose with the football. All right, so it's only 6 nothing, and Patrick Mahomes trying to get the guys on the same page. Meantime, let's check out the second half. They do get things back together, and it's Edward Dillera who finds the end zone. And you see all this talent. They've got weapons everywhere. They can make plays. They've got a great offense. When they are focused, they're tough to stop. 17 in a row. Kansas City's in the lead. What a good fourth quarter it was. You're talking about guys who made great throws. Justin Herbert, Mike Williams, 20-yard touchdown. Yeah, they were great all day. Williams, big body, hard to defend. Back and forth we go. It's Mahomes. Nicole Hartman, eight-yard score. Chiefs back on top of the tap pass. Another one of those weapons. So we're tied at 24 after a field goal. Mahomes looking for Kelsey. Put this one kind of up for grabs, and Aloe Gilman's waiting for it. Yeah, third down and eight. You know, we've seen this over and over. They find themselves on these big plays, but here they're just out of sync. We thought he was going to drive for the winning field, but now the Chargers have a chance. Fourth down situation, and Herbert and Jalen Guyton incomplete, a pass interference. Yeah, we really didn't get a good look at this. I didn't think it was interference when I saw it. A uh, tight call that stood. And they don't run down the clock. The Chiefs only one time out. They throw it up. Mike Williams, game-winning score. The Kansas City Chiefs' worst start since 2015 as the Chargers get a road win really early in the season obviously we haven't had many of these kind of we haven't had any since I've, I've been uh, playing quarterback here we're behind uh, all these teams in our division um, but the bright spot is we got a long season to go so it's just going to be how we respond and how we we go to work every single day
Time now to simplify the game powered by Microsoft Surface. Go back to Drew and Chris with the work of those quarterbacks today. Yeah, well, we're going to look at Mahomes and Herbert, right? But first, Mahomes, because we're used to seeing him make magic. But what we've seen the last two weeks is some fourth quarter blunders, and that's what me and Drew are going to talk about right here. Yeah, today we, we've seen these no-look passes before, but right here, what's the purpose? There's no need Why? for that. You got a wide open guy in the middle of the field, find a way to get it out in front of him so he doesn't have to make a circus catch. Instead, what happens? You get a tipped interception. And then here, fourth quarter, we're used to seeing these plays be made, right. but at the same time, you see defenses now staying on top. They're going to have to be more patient and take underneath completion. Yeah, crazy. I mean, a tie football game to make that mistake. And now this is this is Drew Brees' new favorite quarterback right here, everybody, Justin Herbert. He has been amazing. Just continues to deliver on big downs and big situations every week. But, Drew, you got to be proud of what you saw from Justin Herbert today. I love these high ball throws, too. Look where he's locating these balls to guys like Jared Cook and Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. Big targets, but big catch radiuses and opportunities to throw them open. Yeah, Mike, I mean, I don't know. It might be a changing of the guard maybe yet in the AFC West. I'm not sure about that yet. Maybe. We'll get to the highlights of the other teams in the division in a minute, but let me bring Mike Florio back to talk about another Mike and Mike Williams who had those two touchdowns. Well, and I spoke to Mike Williams specifically about the second one, the game winner. It was first and goal from the four with 36 seconds left. And Williams said that the play call was a run, but that Justin Herbert said to him, be ready for the fade. Herbert changed the play, threw the ball to Williams, connected, game-winning touchdown right there. Now, after the game, Chiefs coach Andy Reid felt ill. He was taken to a local hospital as a precaution. The Chiefs currently believe that he's fine, he'll be okay, and that's very good news from Kansas City, Mike. We absolutely send our best to one of the best in the league, Andy Reid, who started his coaching career in Green Bay. Packers got Devontae Adams, eight catches a buck 21 last week. 18 touchdown catches led the league last year. See if he gets in the end zone tonight on Sunday Night Football. Simplify the game, powered by Microsoft Surface, the official sideline technology provider of the NFL. This house is on fire! And guess who's there? Doing on a double team, absolutely smokes. Makes the catch, burning the defender, touchdown! As you rise, rise from the flames. is Football Night in America, served by Applebee's. Well, tonight will be the first packed house inside this building since January of 2020 when the 49ers hammered the Packers in the NFC Championship. George Kittle was a blocking force in that game, as he always is. Rod, what's his greatest impact on this 49ers offense? It's his mindset. I mean, he's a defensive player playing offense. We see him out here doing routes. I, I don't understand how somebody that big can be that athletic. Scary sight. Scary thought. Rod, Sunday Night 7 is back this week. More receiving yards. Devontae Adams or George Kittle? Who do you like? I'm going with Devontae Adams. I think he has to have a big game in order for him to win, but I also think San Francisco will play a lot of zone coverage, which will open up a lot of easy opportunities for him. And you can make your picks right along with us over on the NBC Sports Predictor app. Maria, back over to you. All right, thanks, Jack. Let's get back to the highlights. New York Jets taking on the Denver Broncos, and let's talk about the Broncos looking to start 3-0 for the first time since 2016, and defense showed up against the rookie quarterback, Zach. Miller. It definitely did. The Jets can't protect the quarterback. That's the first issue and they can't run the football all that well either so it's a double whammy you got a rookie quarterback under this much pressure it's not going to be an easy day yes how about the rookie quarterback was sacked five times that's coming off of that four interception loss to new england yeah i mean it's not easy right now the jets they got to find their rhythm they're a rebuilding team but this denver bronco team has found their stride and they're going to be a force in the afc yeah they rushed for 121 yards two touchdowns and uh, how about their offensive tackle garrett bowles he said stop doubting teddy are we Doubting the Denver Broncos because they started the season 3-0? and I don't think so. You shouldn't. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, Teddy knows how to take care of the football and, and run the offense. They have a running game that's kind of coming about. Pretty good receivers. And Vic Fangio in that defense is one of the better units in football. Yeah, five sacks on the night. That, not that's bad. not too, too bad. Not too <laughs> All right, Mike. <laughs> Let's pick up the conversation there. Teddy Bridgewater, six incompletions, no turnovers. You were with Teddy for a year in New Orleans. What are you watching as you see him play? 
Well, first off, I'm a big fan of Teddy Bridgewater, and I think he's brought some leadership and some moxie to that offense and, 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 and a great skill set, too. And, and I think he fits the style and the profile of what they're trying to accomplish with that team. Yeah, and believe it or not, Teddy has helped that defense out. We were kind of questioning them last right. year, but they were in so many games where they're playing from behind, teams are just running the football. Now they're playing with leads, and those pass rushers can get going. 26 points allowed in three games. I know they've played the Jets, the Giants, and Jacksonville. We don't know about them yet, but they've put themselves in position. Interesting game next week, Baltimore taking on Denver. Mm -hmm. Right now, Denver atop the division at 3-0, and the Raiders may join them there in a couple of seconds. Aaron Jones, one of the league's premier running backs, signed that big contract in the offseason. Lions had no answer for him. We'll see if the 49ers do on Sunday Night Football. More highlights of the big games of the day in just a moment. Welcome to the Hyundai Sunday Night Kickoff. Well, we welcome all of you now. All the early games and late games are done, and one of the big ones, Sunday Night Football. Finally welcoming fans back to Levi's Stadium because COVID forced the team to relocate to Arizona mid last year. Last game here at full capacity 20 months ago. NFC Championship game, Green Bay 37 to 20. In that one, San Francisco getting the win. Will San Francisco get the win here tonight? Let's go on the field presented by Hyundai and Tony Aaron Rodgers. What are you expecting from him? Today? Yeah, I'm expecting to see a lot of balls in the air. Chris and Drew talked about all those unusual arm angles and things. Mm -hmm. He might need them tonight because his <laughs> offensive line is banged up. It's going to be tough protecting for him. Drew, what about Jimmy Garoppolo? The opposite number starting for the 49ers. Yeah, well, he's last two meetings, he's been the beneficiary of, of great defense and a great run game. But if this turns into a shootout, they're going to need to see some, some big playmaking ability from their quarterback. All right, we're less than a half an hour away from Sunday Night Football. More highlights coming up, including the game that just ended, Maria. Yeah, we had a great one as Miami traveled to Las Vegas to take on the Raiders. And remember, Tua Tungvaloa out for at least three weeks. Jacoby percent in and a pick six to start out this one for Derek. Yeah, obviously a miscommunication with the wide receiver. He thought he should stop. Derek Carr thought he was going to go. But easy touchdown for the Dolphins to get off 7 nothing. Landon Roberts, he'll take it, return it 85 yards for the touchdown and the early lead. Now early in the third quarter, Raiders down two, Carr finding Hunter Renfro. If it's not going to Darren Waller, it's going to Renfro. They're calling this out there in Las Vegas, third and Renfro. Okay. So we better get used to it when you watch the Raiders. All right, let's get used to this. Check out this play presented by Under Armour, and it's the overtime forcing drive that Miami Dolphins put together. Yes, I mean, as clutch as it gets right here. In the pocket, great throw on fourth, eight, uh, fourth and eight by Jacoby Brissett to Devontae Parker. Then again here, we got a second and one, a minute 14 left. Throws the ball in the back of the end zone. Give your guy a shot. Mm. This is what happens. Happens. Pass interference. Yep. On Trayvon Mullen, so it sets up Miami with first and goal at the one. On third and goal, Brissett can't find anybody, but he can find the end zone. Keep pushing, keep pushing. Doesn't Not get quite. in. Not quite. And they don't have a timeout, Maria. So now they got up to the line of scrimmage in a hurry. Jacoby Brissett does a great job. Again, big man just making some moves and getting in the end zone. All right, so that time it works. No timeout for Miami. And let's go for two. Can we force it? Yes, it is good as Brissett is able to find Will Fuller on the play. Over. Time. Miami really had a great, did a great job in the fourth quarter, battling back. How about this now? Now down by three points, fourth and 20. Mm -hmm. Jacoby Brissett outside the pocket. Mike Gusecki, huge play, and you're going, whoa, here goes the Dolphins again. Hey, 27 yards and a first down for Miami. Then they tied it later in the next, in that following drive. Derek Carr, though, to Brian Edwards for the 34-yard game. It's just going to deliver in these moments every week, I guess. It just doesn't matter what the defense is. Perfect throw, and then see you later. We'll see you later. The field goal is good. The Raiders win at 31 to 28. Remember, it was a barn burn the last time these two teams faced off, but it was Miami who got the one-point win over Las Vegas, so it's interesting they get the win here. What stands out to you about this one? Well, I, I mean, just the, the Raiders continue to battle. Derek Carr, the way he's playing on the offensive side of the ball is, is amazing. It's as good as anybody in football right now. And remember, this is the second overtime game that the Raiders have had to play over the last two weeks, so they're playing some, some extra quarters here, but if you want to hear Chris Sims talk about this and every single game that you're watching here today, That's make right. sure you tune into the Chris Sims Unbuttoned Podcast presented by Under Armour. I'm sure he's got a lot See, of thoughts See, I like in there. you. I like I, you. Thanks for fucking Shameless plug for Thank my you. guy, Chris. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Mike. Yeah, 14 quarters for the Raiders in 14 days, and Sims has complained about working overtime. Enough of you, Chris. Let's get to Seattle and Minnesota and Chris Carson, who had 80 yards, including this touchdown. The Seattle offense got off to a great start. Looked like they were going to be hard to stop, but that was about it from them. Yeah, Pete Carroll's got his roots in Minnesota, but Kirk Cousins, two drives late in the half. Adam Thielen on the business end of one. 
And then, right before the end of the half, to Justin Jefferson. And that was it. Seattle couldn't score the rest of the way. 23 straight for the Vikings and Russell Wilson and Kirk Cousins who went up against each other in the Big Ten. It is won by Cousins this time. Drew, let's watch what uh, Sean Payton in New Orleans. We know what they did week one. Week two is a struggle. How about today in New England? How about Kamara get you going? Yeah, this was a drive early in the game, but, but really after this, it, it was a, a lot of the New Orleans defense coming up with big plays. And they did. Mac Jones got hit, the rookie, off the here. P.J. Williams will come up with the pick and take it back to the nine. New Orleans forced two turnovers, one for a touchdown, one that got him deep inside the New England territory. It was really a story of the defense today. All right, so Jameis Winston trying to get him in the end zone here. Maybe not the best thought on this pass, but it works out thanks to Marquez Calloway. I'm not, I'm not sure if he was throwing it away or throwing it up, but that's one where you just say a prayer that's as it's a up in the air. Bay ball right there. <laughs> that's great. That's that 30 pick season ball from uh, maybe a pick to six, and the Saints take the lead into the locker room. First play, third quarter. This isn't Jones' fault. John o. Smith's got to hold it. Yeah, and Matt Jones really played well all day. He was pushed and pestered around in that pocket, but he stood in there with poise, delivered accurate balls. Unfortunately. Uh, that's, not much little, that's a little off target. I'm not blaming that all on John. Uh, Malcolm Knock Jenkins, it down, don't tip it up. Malcolm's there for his seventh career pick six. And then they ice the game with a good ground pounding drive and Taysom Hill doing hurdles. This is what everyone loves to see from Taysom Hill. The four minute drill is the Taysom Hill drill. <laughs> and he closes it out here with the score. The Saints beat Bill Belichick and the Patriots 28 to 13. Bill, what did you see on uh, Max uh, interceptions? Um, yeah, well, probably the same thing you saw. There, it took a second for that answer, but you eventually got the answer, and we all saw what happened. So let, let's start with the Saints on this side here, because we saw Green Bay. Wow. And we saw last week against Carolina, awful this week something in between so what do you make of the Saints after three weeks well defensively I think they're playing outstanding uh, offensively I don't think they have an identity right now uh, we know who Alvin Kamara is and we know that the Saints want to establish the run game with Alvin Kamara but who are they throwing the ball to? You know, what does the passing game look like? Now, there's a lot of new faces. There's a lot of young players. Michael Thomas is out. Yeah. Traquan Smith is out. Jared Cook no longer there. Emmanuel Sanders no longer there. So you've got all these young players who don't have a whole lot of experience mm -hmm. playing with a new quarterback who doesn't have a lot of experience with them or in the system. So it's just taking a little bit of time. Now, they're finding ways to win, but today wasn't pretty just like last week wasn't pretty. You, you sound like an offensive guy. <laughs> I thought it was very pretty because their defense played great. And we just have to understand, this is who the Saints are right now. Right. They're a great defensive team. They can pressure the passer. They, they're very active and physical. And they can run the football. And they can bring Taysom Hill in to run the football. So they may win some games. I won a lot of games in Tampa yes, like that, did. playing good defense yes, and running the ball. It can be done. I'd be excited if I were the Saints right now. We're 2-1, and one and we haven't hit our stride on offense I would just yet. say a majority of the games that have come down to last position where you're gonna to have to make plays in the passing game it's gonna to have to be balanced well, one thing the Saints do get to do they get to go back home they haven't been home in a long time remember with the hurricane they moved they were around they were on the road first time they get back to New Orleans in 29 days they're flying back to Louisiana right now let me go to the other side of this the Patriots we're watching Mac Jones develop we're watching their defense the Patriots are the same thing as you look at them we're trying to figure out what their identity is right now yeah I, I was impressed with the way Mac Jones played today now he stood in the pocket he was poised he looked in command and under control he you saw his eyes in the right place throwing it to the right guy those guys just weren't making plays for him and give give credit to the Saints defense they got after him with four-man rush with pressure and guys just couldn't get open down the field for him well we're going to see him in person next week we'll all be there football night in America on the road for Sunday Night Football when Tom Brady comes back to Foxborough Larry David's there Magic Johnson's there Jason Sudeikis is there everybody's there to see Tom Brady in L.A. He hopes to be there at the end of the season. Well, Matthew Stafford is the new Hollywood attraction. No score in the second. Stafford and Tyler Higby that breaks the seal on this one. Yeah, Sean McVay had a lot of good stuff up early for that man coverage of the Bucks. Tampa would respond. Long scoring drive. It's Brady. It's Gronk. 26 yards. How does he get wide open? Red zone. You got to cover that guy. Brady finds his favorite target. Gronk's usually the guy down there. This time they give it to Chris Godwin. One of the Ram plays that Jet Sweep. 
So Godwin scores the first rushing touchdown of the season. Now time for the Sunday night game flow presented by Progressive. We go to the Rams next drive. Two minutes left in the half. It's Stafford and Higby one more time. We mentioned a package for man coverage, tight man coverage. Uh, they ran some picks, some legal picks on the line of scrimmage, rubbing people off, Ooh. knowing it's going to be bump coverage. Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford had a great plan early on for the man-to-man. -man. And Cooper Cup on the business end. Now two more touchdowns on the season, as you saw in the Sunday night game flow presented by Progressive. So the Rams are up seven. Sean McVay doesn't lose. Went up at halftime. He charged the locker room because he wanted to drop this for the third quarter. It's Stafford. 0 for 2 on deep balls to Deshaun Jackson. Third time the charm. 75 yard score. And this is another thing they saw in, in the tape. Deshaun Jackson with double moves. They ran three of them. They finally got him open deep. He had four touchdowns on the day. Brady to Gronk. Hit hard here by Terrell Lewis. Gronk later headed to the locker room. X-rays I'm told were negative with Gronk after that hit. But Brady would take it in, finish it himself. That quarterback sneak that he is so good at. So Tampa within seven. But it's back to Stafford. They had no answer for the receiving game. And Cooper Cup. With a triple move. Out, in, back out, and score. NFL leader, 25 catches, 367 yards, five touchdowns. Dick drive, pressure on Brady. Kenny Young brings him down to the fourth quarter. Rams have built a 17-point lead. Brady looking for Giovanni Bernard on fourth down. They don't connect. The Rams defense steps up, a late score to Bernard, 34-24. The Rams are undefeated. So we know the Rams are good. What's the story with the Bucks? Are you seeing enough championship qualities out of them through three weeks? Uh, I haven't. And, and, and I'll tell you why. Uh, defensively, I feel like, n number one, they're, they're down two of their top five DBs. But when, when they made their drastic change last year, it was away from this man coverage, single coverage, where they were getting beat on a lot of deep plays. And it was to more of the zone coverage, keep it in front of you, front four, get pressure. They weren't able to do that today. And you see all these explosive plays down the field. Well, that's what time will give you. And also these one-on-one -on -one matchups that the Rams were able to exploit. And we also saw why the Rams wanted Matthew Stafford. Oh, when yeah. they weren't able to run the ball, he won the game for him today. We will be there next Sunday night in person to see Brady's return to Foxborough. Football night leads you to Sunday night football from there. And right now to the Bay Area, George Kittle, Nick Bosa, the undefeated 49ers, getting set for Devontae Adams and the reigning MVP, Aaron Rodgers. Sunday night football minutes away, the best of Sunday number three as we continue here on NBC. Looking forward to this. We've seen them in the playoffs. Aaron Rodgers heads back out to Northern California. The 49ers head to their locker room looking to come back out in Levi's with a big house for the first time in a long time. But first, best of week three brought to you by Verizon 5G. Built right in Buffalo. Bill's only team in their division to win. Tony as they beat Washington. Yes, and they're starting to get those explosive plays from Josh Allen, and they look fantastic the last two weeks. Meantime, Miami goes to Las Vegas, plays an overtime game, goes to the very end, second time in as many home games. Vegas took it all the way to the end of the fifth quarter. That's why there are no clocks in Las Vegas. It's timeless. Game-winning field goal for Carlson. The Raiders are 3-0 for the first time since 0-2. Drew, Arizona had to work against Jacksonville. Jacksonville started off fast. It looked like they were going to go on a run and, and upset, but... The young quarterback's got to learn not to take those type of chances. Trevor Lawrence picked. Jacksonville's lost 18 consecutive games. Tony in Minnesota, three touchdown passes for Kirk Cousins. Yeah, Cousins and his receivers were fantastic. That um, Seattle defense has a lot of work to do. Back-to-back -back losses for Seattle, who goes to San Francisco. Kansas City, only team in the AFC West to lose. Herbert with a big game. Herbert made some huge throws down the stretch. That one to cap it off. Tony, the debut for Justin Fields was ruined with a Miles Garrett part. Yes, and Justin Fields saw too much of this. Miles Garrett one-on-one -on -one running free. He had four and a half of the nine sacks for the Browns in their victory. Drew Pittsburgh is struggling. They're the only team to lose in their division today. Cincinnati gets a win. Something tells us this is going to be a very familiar <laughs> side as the season progresses. Joe Burrow to Jamar Chase twice today, four times in the first three weeks. Wild finish Tony in Detroit. Ravens down two. Big play here. Fourth and 19, three-man rush, man coverage. You give these guys a lot of time to run crossing routes. Lamar Jackson with the poise to find his receiver. And Justin Tucker with the NFL record, 66 yards uh. by an inch off the crossbar uh. and through. And the Lions lose to the NFL record-setting field goal for the second time in their history. Extraordinary finish for Baltimore. Through the Saints get Malcolm Jenkins, that veteran, that voice in the locker room, with a pick six here to beat the Patriots. Another dominant performance from the Saints defense. 
Jones. They got after Mac Jones today. Forced a couple turnovers. Big win. We'll be in New England next week to watch Tom Brady's return. Brady 68 yards of shy of passing Drew for the all-time lead in the NFL. Matthew Stafford keeps going. He might get there. He and Cooper Cup have been terrific. They have been hot, and this is why they wanted Matthew Stafford to win these games where it's tough to run the football. Rams win by 10 time now for the home team picks brought to you by Lowe's. We'll start it out in Santa Clara. Jack. Like 56% of the country is on Green Bay. We saw Hawaii Aaron Rodgers in week number one. Week number two, we saw the MVP form of Aaron Rodgers. This game has a coin flip type feel to it. I just feel better about A-Rod flipping the coin. I'm on the Packers. Who do you like, Rod? I agree with you. I'm never picking against Aaron Rodgers. I like the Packers in a close one. There you go. Mike Florio, who you on? We know after San Francisco blew out the Packers in the regular season two years ago and they were getting ready to play in the NFC Championship, I convinced myself, a play here, a play there, the Packers can win it. I picked the Packers. I'm not making that mistake again. Give me the 49ers, Maria and Chris. <laughs> All right, Mike. I'm taking the 49ers as well. Chris, you're going with who? You're wearing yellow for the Packers and doing that? Okay, yes. fine. I'm going 49ers. Too good up front on both sides of the ball. 28-17, 49ers. Back to the only guy that picked the Ravens last week and is winning at this whole game. Yeah, do they put our <laughs> records up there? I don't know. I can't see. <laughs> they are up there. I'll yes, go with the Niners. Are. True. I'm going with the Packers, but I think it's about the Packers' defense being able to step up and stop that run of the 49ers. I do think it's going to be high scoring, though. Well, Aaron Rodgers is going to have a lot of motivation to go back home and win this game, but I think this game will be won in the trenches, pass rush by the 49ers, and run blocking. I'm going with the Niners. And there they are. The home team picks for tonight brought to you by Lowe's. San Francisco 49ers trying to join the other teams at 3-0. and Pretty small list as we are almost three weeks through the NFL slate this season. We are excited to get to Foxborough next week to be there in person for Brady's return, but it's a return to his native area, if you will, as Aaron Rodgers gets back out to the Bay Area. Packers and Niners with Al, Chris, and Michelle carry Underwood. As always, gets it going. Thanks for hanging with us on Football Night in America. We'll see you at halftime. And of course, enjoy the game. This has been the Hyundai Sunday Night Kickoff. Spanish language audio provided by Telemundo Deportes or watch tonight's game in Spanish on Universo.